uh, when I was eight years old, I broke my arm. I had some cyst, which is still here. Yeah. I, had, I, had, I had some cyst that I had to stay home. While I was home for months, I watched Dawn of the Dead for the first time. Eight years okay. old. Yes, my parents were kind of crazy. They, they allowed me to see this like, you know, uh, they had the crazy son cooped up. Eh? So my brother and I, we watched this over and over and over again until we've memorized everything. We had this book, Nick Potter or in something, Marsha Wilson, movies on TV. We're checking, wait, Dawn of the Dead. They gave it a turkey. Mm. Turkey, meaning the worst film ever made. Flash forward like nine years later, it's now a stone cold classic. Any, mm. Anywhere you go from Quentin Tarantino to every director, George Romero is the god. But I'm so happy lang, that even as kids, we understood that this film was something else. And I think what it spoke to me was that, uh, and this is going to sound bejo, badui, and cornball, but this is what really I feel. One, it was because in Dawn of the Dead, people wanted to go in the mall. Okay. The zombies wanted to go in the mall. And there's a line there, na para, why are they coming here? Para, oh, this is probably what they remember the most. So it's almost like uh, it was sort of a veil thing on consumerism. This was done in 1978. The world was changing. To, and sure enough, three years later, four years later, the you know, Reaganomics, me, the me generation. My parents kept on saying, see, Romero had it right. He was already saying that this is really, that the hordes of undead are really us just sort of disconnecting. And even though I'm a, con- I'm a super consumer, don't get mm. me wrong, but mm. it was sort of more than a zombie film. Oh. Also, what scared the living shit out of me was that my parents loved all these horror films. So we'd seen everything. Kung Amityville, I just tell them, then we'll leave the house. Mm. Kung may mumu yung bahay, yeah, yeah. tayo. Tapos. Yeah. Kung, I never got kung, that, but wala ka na lang pa ipaglaw. Mismo. What do we care? It's a house. Diba? And uh, if you're, pos- you know, may possessed yung utol ko, sorry. Sorry, guys. <laughs> eh, ganun eh. Alis na. na. Oh, diba? But then, when the zombie thing came, na walang mata, you can't hide. What if the person you love the most became a zombie? Which was the mm. existential question, you know, an eight year old and an 11 year old brother oh, would shit. ask themselves. And it was like, when it never left me, I am an old person. It was still like, is this still Nikki? Do I have to shoot her in the head? <laughs> Their loved ones. Is she are... hearing you right now? Yeah, she can. <laughs> <laughs> she can. Kasi, <laughs> Do I have to shoot her in the head? Because <laughs> the love, your loved ones, a movie, kasi, your love, they're your loved ones. Kaya kumalat. Kini keep nila kasi feel nila may sakit yeah. lang. Also, my dad said, it's an analogy for drug addiction because yeah. our family had you know some struggles with some yeah. of this and so I understood it it's almost like you could see like ganito nga eh. you're going to be shunned by society you're going to be treated like you're a monster and you're going to be kept in a jail uh-huh. Galing, diba? there's many layers okay that's probably not exactly what the movie is about but I sort of you know 